Hello everyone, it's Jeanette Camping here from Henry Stewart Events. I'm delighted to welcome you to our latest webinar, Connecting Content Directly from Your DAM, PIM, Cloud Storage to your Adobe Desktop application. We're delighted to have over 200 attendees today registered from over 22 countries. And just a couple of housekeeping points before we get started. We'll take some questions at the end of the presentation, so please send them through on your GoToWebinar panel at any time during the presentation, and we'll take as many as we can in the time available. And the webinar is being recorded, and you'll all be sent a link to the recording tomorrow. Now I'd like to introduce you to our speakers, Andreas Mich Mich Michalski and okay. Frederick Sanwi. <laughs> Hello, sorry, Andy, over to you. Hello, yeah, thanks a lot for your introduction. It's amazing to have all of you here, it's great. Uh, and thanks, Frederick, that you uh, have the time and uh, yeah. share with us a couple of uh, insights and information about um, the uh, creative operation. Yeah, that, thank you. Uh, really Good to all. So, um, so welcome you in the name of CI Hub. Um, uh, and we do a live presentation later on. Uh, our goal is to make it easy as possible for everybody needing his assets within his creative or his office uh, products. We have developed the plugin and a platform that easily connects to wherever you have your assets uh, and not just give you an easy access to all of that, but it will also deliver uh, functionalities that makes your life easier. That's our, that's our goal. And we believe that, uh, with that with that plugin and with the platform, we can deliver a good uh, functionality um, for the marketing automation, which all of us, agencies, creatives, uh, freelancers, corporates, is driving us. So, Fred, I would love to hand over to you to give us a little bit on uh, on creative automation and uh, yeah, all of sure. you. Uh, yes, so uh, thanks, so Andy, for um, for this opportunity. It's it's always a pleasure to. Uh, to share knowledge. Uh, we already in June because of course we did one just before some vacation time and we had some very great feedback. So it was, uh, it's again an, uh, a pleasure to, uh, to share again. And of course, uh, my first slide is, uh, we know the time we are living for now. Um, due to the COVID-19, it's uh, a lot of questions, a lot of uh, some crises sometimes. But in fact, at the end of the day, um, most of our uh, analysts are okay with the statement that this is a massive opportunity for any brands, agencies, retailers uh, to accelerate the business. And uh, I'd like to share with you this uh, report, uh, which is very interesting regarding this, uh, uh, this survey from a couple of C-level uh, uh, stakeholders and they are really engaged now, they made the decision. We know that it's maybe too late because the winner of tomorrow are maybe here, the people who started before the crisis. But it's never uh, never late. It's, it's up to you to make a decision to accelerate your business, to accelerate your digital transformation. Next slide. And of course, the purpose of today is all about the creativity. Uh, what, whoever you are, a brands, retailer, agencies, everything is starting from the creation of the assets. And reason why, the dam is the foundation of any business today. Uh, we will see you can work with a PIM system, with a CMS system, but the best way uh, to get a system up and running uh, with a top performance, able to drive any type of assets, is really to get a dam. And creativity is really at this hut, which is uh, which is really uh, uh, really great uh, at the time. And so when you are looking at the creativity, in fact, today, uh, the things that we can see here is we have a lot of steps and a lot of tools. So uh, it's starting from the creation, from the, uh, from the shooting, it's starting from the design, we have a lot of uh, assets to manage. And also, I'm sharing also with you uh, interesting 
uh, survey from uh, in motion now uh, where people say at at the, at the level of the creative teams that they have to manage even more assets. And of course, they are struggling with that. So they need to get the right tool. And we will see that the solution is to get a, just like as a connector between the desktop, Adobe desktop applications and the DAM system. Next slide. So what are the challenges? Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, sorry. this is the right one. We have time. <laughs> and so uh, what we've seen in fact regarding the challenges is today and especially for creative operation teams, uh, it's very complex to manage uh, all this uh, all this content. Uh, today and something that has changed, I will say, since uh, the last decade, we have uh, a lot of very high definition to manage. I can see now that a couple of retailers are working with super high definitions. It's 400 million pixels. Uh, it's super high definition video files. And so it's uh, sometimes the teams are, are facing some pain at that stage. So uh, in the meantime, so to solve this issue, they are trying to find uh, some tools. But in the meantime, if you have too many tools, uh, you are killing a little bit of productivity. And this is something we, again, this report is showing. So we need to be more efficient. We need to get uh, one place where we can uh, organize, process the assets and not doing everything on our side, on your desktop, and then to send email and then to, or to send some, uh, some links from, from uh, public cloud and et cetera. Uh, so, uh, of course, we are ready to take responsibilities, but we need to get the right solution in the end. Next slide. And so I like this one because this is a clear representation today of, of creative uh, processes. So as I said, and this is more or less the purpose of the DAM system because it's all about the creation of the assets to the distribution. So everything is starting, uh, you are shooting the, the, your images, um, uh, and I spend a lot of time also with uh, uh, photo studio, uh, wherever in New York or even in Paris. And uh, that's something I can see we have more and more automation. Uh, sometimes, of course, the, the project is created before images are coming. So you have to manage uh, projects, shoots, metadata, and then uh, the images coming from the shoot are have to ingest, have to inherit this information. Uh, in a super fast time. Then you have the second step is all about retouching. Uh, and you need to get some something like a mechanism, a system where you can easily share these contents. It's also very important to get uh, the right uh, uh, the right view of your asset. You need to get some control color environments, uh, what I would say. Uh, some people are talking about soft proof. And I see that, in, especially with some photo shooting uh, retailers or they have some system where they can mark up the information they can ask to be retouched that you have made, uh, you have to to change or to or to make a picture more uh, accurate or to or, uh, to do some uh, adjustment regarding the pictures and so you have a lot of uh, a workflow something where we can call a business process mapping between the different stakeholders the photo studio the brands or the people this is all the creation at that stage and of course, at this stage, they are using a lot of Adobe application. It can be Lightroom, it can be Photoshop. Most of the time it's Photoshop, Illustrator. Uh, it's more and more videos, so you have also to use Adobe Premiere at the stage. And as soon as the project is completed, one of the things you have to do is to share these contents on the different touch points. So of course, most of the time, this is a DAM system, but now more and more DAM system uh, are, are in an ecosystem where everything has to be connected. I see us, for example, with retailers, a DAM project is always uh, in the meantime with a PIM project and PIM and DAM have to play uh, together. And the CMS is just like the, the, the brown portal. And so uh, from the creation, as from the uh, asset creations to these distributions, we have to manage all in one in a very fast way. Next slide. And so, of course, uh, the solution is a DAM. Uh, 
we already, and uh, thanks to Henri Stewart, we have so many great webinars alongside this year. Uh, you have uh, some events, just like next week with the Dam Festival, where everybody of, the, of us, of you, can learn about the usage of a dam. And I think it's always good to repeat uh, this thing. And especially uh, for me, working close to customers every day, uh, I, I repeat always sometimes the same thing, but the dam is two things. This is an engine for your assets. So this is a place where you can process the files. Uh, it can be a very large TIFF files. It can be here in HD, 4K video. This is a place where you or your, your files, you have to manage everything. But in the same time, if this is also an engine of metadata. This is the two things, processing the assets and metadata. And so this is really uh, the purpose of a dam where you can, of course, alongside the years, we see some great improvements. Some, some vendors trying to find some attributes or some uh, marketing uh, wording for that. So they are calling something enterprise dam, dynamic dam, uh, digital experience things, but whatever these marketing, marketing things, uh, this is the right place to organize your assets, to manage your revisions, to, and of course, the best place ever to connect with your Adobe CC application where creativity starts. Next slide. So just before moving to uh super demonstration uh, of on the end, the usage of DAM and, and Adobe plugins, I will just try to gather uh, in this ecosystem the benefits of using a plugin with a DAM. So first of all, and, and we will see in the demonstration, which is something great, uh, most of designers, they don't want to leave the application. And I see too often that some people, they are, in InDesign, they are going to the DAM, they are downloading the files, they are opening the, the, uh, the, the images in, a, in Photoshop. They are wasting the time. And especially, just imagine for retailers, they have a lot of stress because sometimes everything has to be done yesterday and today. So as soon as you're staying in the Adobe desktop application, the, just the fact to get, uh, just like as a bridge, but something where you can connect all your different sources so it can be sometimes different time system, but it can be also your Adobe stop applications or your Getty images. And sometimes, because of course we have, not, not everybody has a damn system. And some people are using a Dropbox drive, a drive, uh, a Google drive. And so we have, we sometimes we, uh, free on the designers have to pick up also information. And just the fact to get one banner where you can pick up everything in just one place, it's just awesome because you will save a lot of time. So th this is the first uh, purpose of, the, of this connector. Of course, this connector has to be available for the, uh, the suite. So it means Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, and of course, Adobe Premiere, as we will see, uh, because today video is really the key milestone for the brands. The, uh, if you want to get to pay attention to your visitors on your website, the best way is to get videos. And video sometimes is just like a motion design. So it's a mix of pictures, text, and et cetera. So Adobe Premiere is, uh, I would say it's not again, it, it has already been uh, at the top, but it's very cool to get uh, such a connector. It's very important also to manage metadata and all of them, not only IPDC, XMP, but also custom metadata. And just the fact, as we will see, just to type some words, you will see the magic of the plugins to be able to retrieve just in one, in a couple of clicks, all your images just then on an advanced search. And you can also use some similarity search with your uh, stock applications, okay? Uh, the other thing is because when you are a designer, uh, the first image is not is is not the, the the first image is not the first revision because you have a couple of uh, retouch to do to the two images based on your workflows on some approval uh, and of course you have to manage revisions and you will see as soon as you can manage revisions you can move from one to the other it's just also very great and when you are working your images in Photoshop you have automatic a link with the InDesign and the asset links so. It, it, you just have to move from one to the other. Um, and of course, for uh, at the end of the day, as soon as you have to produce some prints, uh, some digital content, it can be a flyer, it can be a brochure, or even a catalog, 
InDesign is a perfect tool uh, at, at the core of a design because you can aggregate so many informations and you will see that now from InDesign, you have a lot of automation and a lot of things coming also alongside the CR plugins. It's very important also when you are working with a team uh, to get some advanced mechanism, just like check-in, check-out. Because just imagine when a designer is working on an image, uh, some of the people can browse them, but they don't have to be able to touch the, uh, the, uh, the picture. So you have to, to get some lock between the DAM and the plugins. And as soon as the picture of the revision number two is back to the DAM, then you can get access to, to this information. So it's all these eight benefits that you can get in just one tool. So you can really understood uh, the time uh, and the money you can save alongside your creative operations work workflows. Next slide. And I think stage is yours, Andy. Fred, that's amazing. And the good thing for all the attendees here, you've already mentioned so many benefits uh, of, an, uh, of, of a plugin in the, directly in the application. Uh, I just changed my presentation a little bit. I start with showing you on how it's, how it's really working. And afterwards, I go into my marketing slides. This might, may, might be a little bit more interesting for all of you. Um, so let me let me just switch to my to my InDesign. Um, there is my InDesign. Um, just a couple of backgrounds. So our goal is really to have one plugin which works um, immediately across all the Adobe applications and the Microsoft applications. And uh, uh, even if it's uh, the title of the webinar is showing you on how it works in your Adobe applications, I will give you a quick preview on how you can use it in PowerPoint. Um, the plugin is, is, uh, is very simple. So I'm in design. That's a plugin that you can uh, easily download and install from the Adobe store. Uh, you can just go to Adobe Exchange, download the plugin uh, and get it uh, in here as extension. Sorry, I only have a German, uh, a German InDesign. So uh, uh, Windows or Fenster uh, extensions, and then it shows up here. It's a, it's a very clean and simple interface. And our main goal is to make all assets available um, wherever they are. And to do so, uh, let me switch to my English interface here. To do so, we have built a connection panel. And as you can see here in my demo, I already connected to my Getty system, my Zilum system, my Claudinary, a pixel box, web dump, brand folder, Dropbox. And I can easily enhance that to whatever system we are already doing. I show you how easy it is. You just click on the plus button. It gives you all the connectors which are available for you. You can select out of a daily growing list of already available systems. These are DAM systems. These are stock uh, providers, these are PIM systems. We do believe that um, having access to the PIM systems is very important. And let me just connect to my Adobe stock. We're using an open out to authentication. Um, so it is first of all very convenient and it's very secure. Uh, we're using an Okta backend system, which means uh, it's easy for us to do enterprise integrations and cope with all the requirements of a corporate and how to integrate that. Uh, and that was all. I'm just connected to my Adobe stock and I'll just show you in a second on how to work with Adobe stock. I can now just um, collapse my connection and can now uh, just browse through the systems I have connected. Here I'm in my Dropbox. Uh, I immediately see all my folders in my Dropbox. I have a folder where I have my InDesign layout. You immediately see all of my InDesign files. And what you may notice here, uh, if it's a little bit small, we can make them larger or smaller, whatever your, your personal preference is. And you can also not just see it in the light table, you can also get a list of all the assets in the folder. And it's very easy. You can decide yourself on what kind of information you want to see. And as you would expect by clicking on the headers here, you can sort the content by size, by keyword, by category, by name, whatever you want, it's just there. Plus, without the need of downloading the asset, 
you can already scroll through um, the different pages without the need of opening it. We all know how, um, how it is if you have more than one version and they all have the same title page and you don't know what, what exact InDesign file that is. So this is, this is very, very simple. And the same works with my pictures. I immediately get access to all of my pictures. I see my images here. I get them listed. Uh, whatever is in my, my system, I can just double click on that. I get all the details of that asset. I get all my metadata. We've just talked about the metadata and how important that is. And if I want to use that image, I can just click on that image and drag and drop it into my InDesign file uh, and use it here. Very simple. And in addition, uh, I can not just drag and drop my images, I also can drag and drop all my metadata and use that within, uh, within my layout. Very, very simple. Uh, let me go back in my, um, in my templates folder and let me open an InDesign file here. With my right click, uh, I can decide if I want to place and link it so I can I can place an InDesign file in an InDesign document or a PDF in an InDesign document, or I can just open it. Um, jump over, and I immediately see my InDesign file with all my layouts. And what I also see with that layout, I have three different versions. Very simple to scroll through the versions. Our plugin is supporting all the functionalities that are supported by the system you're connecting to. Let me just show you that in that example. Would like to use. Also, um, if you're in a Dropbox, uh, you can filter your content automatically by keywords. And that makes it very handy and easy to search in your Dropbox. Uh, with the keywords out of the um, out of the metadata of the different images. Okay, let me close these two and let me switch to a different system. Uh, uh, let me go. Yeah, let me go to my job box. Sorry for. So let me open, open this InDesign file. Open. And now with that InDesign file, um, it happens what you'll be expecting. I'm opening that InDesign file and imagine I'm a new user in an agency and now I immediately open that InDesign file and I get what you expect. I get the information that all of these images are not available locally. And you know, InDesign needs the files locally. This is very easy to sort for us. We just click on, the, on our check panel. And within the check panel, now CI Hub is analyzing the whole document and immediately tells me that these are the images which are used in my layout. Yeah. It tells me that these images are locally not available or not relinked. Uh, and what I can do, it's now very easy. I can just push that one button and relink all of these assets to my InDesign document. Now it's all done. And this is a very powerful function because I'm not just linking and relinking. I'm also getting the information that, uh, that there are oops, that there are different versions available of that selected image yeah in that case i have a black version and a bronze version and a gold version i can just click on that click my update button and it will immediately change um, that asset within my within my file if someone would have changed that image in photoshop or illustrator i would also immediately get that information that there is a newer version available and it makes it very easy for me to now switch between the different versions 
and I can always do that. Yeah, and I can do that across my um, my Adobe products. I will also show you that functionality, how you can use that in uh, Adobe Premiere and do things like that. So that's very, very powerful. Okay, um, I have that design and now I want to change a couple of things. Uh, and in addition, I like that image, but you know, I have used that a couple of times already. Wouldn't it be cool if I just do a click and find a similar image in Getty or Adobe Stock or Shutterstock or wherever I want? Okay, that's easy. I just click on my button similarity search. As you saw in the beginning, I'm connected to my Adobe Stock and to my Getty system. And I just click on Getty and I will immediately get all the images which are similar to the selected one. Uh, and I can now say, yeah, that. That, that's not too bad. Let's use this one. I can just drag and drop this one into my, my layout. And uh, I think that's the problem with placing it. Um, but you can imagine that that works if I place that into my, my layout here. Yeah, easy switching. And if I want to purchase that, the only thing I need to do is just Click on my open in browser, it will immediately bring me to my Getty image uh, page. Uh, I can now log in, purchase that image, and then automatically that image, uh, which is here in low res with a watermark, will be replaced with the high res version uh, of that image in my layout. Very, very simple. And as that image is new, if I go into my check panel again, uh, you will also see, you get a cross-reference and an information on where does all these images come from. And you see, I have downloaded this Getty image and my system automatically sees that I'm connected to my Dropbox and this image is not available in my Dropbox. And the only thing I need to do is I just click my plus button and add this image to my Dropbox. Uh, and I can do that with my PIM system, with my DAM system, uh, and automatically add all the files which are new to the system. CI Hub is automatically checking all that, and we have a couple of advanced functionalities. We sure can check by file name, but we can check with an individual system ID. Uh, we can use the unique uh, URL to check that. And there is a functionality which is called document ID and document instance. We can even check images with that and make sure that these images are unique to the system. And also CI Hub is optimized in a way that uh, if you want to download an asset which is already available, we do an MD5 hash checksum and will prevent downloading already available assets. And this is something what is very important uh, in larger infrastructures, when you're working with high-res files, you don't want that that stuff is downloaded again and again and again. And the CI plugin is very intelligent to, to check on that. Um, so all of these functions uh, are easy available across all the systems you can, can connect to. Um, you always get the linking and relinking function. You always get the ability to find similar images. Uh, but if you don't want to find similar images, it's very simple uh, to go to the original Getty system, uh, take a look at all of the content or do a search. Let's say, let me find everything what is car. Now I'm searching in my Getty account. I'm logged in into Getty. Uh, Getty system knows exactly who I am and what kind of, um, what kind of agreement I have with them. I can now say, okay, give me everything, uh, give me everything what is horizontal and within the horizontal space, give me everything uh, which is, let's say, orange red. And so it's very easy to navigate within uh, your stock systems, use the stock systems. Uh, you get access to all of the content but you also immediately see everything what you or someone from your team has already purchased. And that makes it very easy uh, not to license things uh, um, multiple times 
um, so you have a high transparency within within the plugin. It's very very simple. Okay, um, this is a short overview on what you can do in InDesign. Uh, I could have done some changes to that image uh, in Photoshop or Illustrator. I would save that. I would immediately get the information that there is an update. I can update that. Let me switch to Adobe Premiere because this is uh, this is something what we've seen is in high interest and lots and lots of uh, videos created in uh, in Premiere. And it's always more important to get an easy access to all of your assets within Premiere from your damn system. Uh, I have uh, what I have done is I have created a small project with different video types. I have my project file. And we can completely work with all the projects files. So I can just go in Premiere, open my project file, open in Premiere, and you will get the same situation as you get as you get it in InDesign. Uh, the system tells me I'm opening a project and all the media is completely missing. And normally, if you're familiar with the Premiere, this is a pain because now you have to search for all the assets in, in the system, you have to put them into a folder and on and on and on. And here our check panel does the same as it did in InDesign. I just click on my check panel, it, it checks the, uh, the project. It now sees, you know, these are the assets I'm using in my project. They are all missing, but they are all available in my pixel box. The only thing I need to do is click on that button. If there were different renditions, let's say a high-risk rendition, a low-risk rendition, uh, different versions, I could select and switch. And I just click on my OK button and it's now immediately linking all of my video assets to my project. And I can again just go through my project, uh, can change my timeline, yeah, can work with my assets in here and can even use the functionality of updating my project. Um, this is an image which is included in my timeline. And if I click on that image, I see there are newer versions of that image that are available. And I can just click on that, on that, uh, on that newer image, click my refresh button. Now I can select if I want to have an original, a low res, uh, a 72 DPI version. I just click on OK and it will completely switch that image within my timeline. Um, I again get the information that there is another one available. If that would have been changed in the back end, I would get all these informations. And if I'm happy with that, here is, uh, let, me, let me go to here. Here I have a text element integrated. I can say demo today, almost. And uh, now I can again go just back to my to my pixel box and say, okay, I would like to update my project file and all of my project assets. I just click on save, and then uh, I update my project file in my pixel box system. I say this is version six, and I've uploaded my project file on a central location. Uh, and I can easily share it with my colleagues uh, in the agency or in my group, and they can just work again with that project. They have they don't have to care um, if the if the videos are on the right on the right folder on the right place. They are all in my damn system, and whenever I need them, see I have make sure that it's just uh, rendered the right way and downloaded and synced uh, to that project. Very simple. It's just a click. One more thing, um, I'm in my in my PowerPoint, uh, and as you already see, that's the same panel available in all the uh, PowerPoint uh, in all the Microsoft products. In that case, I'm connected to my Claudinary system, and here we have a couple of very cool features integrated already. Um, let me say I would like to create. I would like to use that guy here use them. And now I have a compliance issue. Yeah, um, because nobody should, uh, should be, uh, should see his face. 
So what I can do is if I have selected that image here, I can go to different download options. Yeah. And one of my download options is blur the face of that image. And I can just say blur face, click on that button. And I need, I need, I immediately get that face in blurred. Or let me go back and I would like to also add, also add a sample file. Um, people, uh, let me take this guy here. And actually, I would like to have just that face. And if I want to do that in PowerPoint, you know, you have to, to, to put um, shapes around it. Here it's very simple. I just say, I would like to get this image as face. I call it Bullauge. And it immediately renders that face in a way that I can just have it that way. It has now identified the, the, the face and has separated the face and just delivers that that face in a in that shape into my into my PowerPoint presentation. Very simple to do, um, very powerful automations behind that. Um, uh, and there is gazillions of features which we can which we can support here. Yeah. Let's say we would like to have this image and we would like to have that as cartoon. It would automatically change that in a cartoon style. It comes down, tuck, and now we can say use that in a cartoon style. So it's not CIP is not just um, doing different um, versions in case in, in, in case of um, different resolutions. We can also manipulate and change these images on the fly with these automations. And normally that would be only available if you go to the website, if you do some um, administration stuff there. Um, then download that image and then use it into your PowerPoint. We all know having these functionalities right at your fingertips is the way to make that available to a larger audience and make using your assets within your BAM system easier and more successful within the organization. Plus, if you have access within the target application, uh, then you know if you download an asset. Um, from from the viewpoint of an uh, asset management system, you are losing the control because the only thing you know is someone has downloaded it. Uh, in case you're using the CIA plugin, you exactly know in which application, on what page, in which frame, someone is using that asset. Uh, so you have the control to the last mile, I would say. Uh, this is a very quick quick overview on uh, on the idea. Um, just to re repeat that, the idea of our plugin is to give you access to wherever your data is. Yeah, We don't care if it is a DAM system, a cloud storage system, a PIM system, or a MEM system. We believe that it is very important for the user um, that it feels as simple as possible with the highest possible automations and transparency. And that's actually what our plugins deliver. Um, the plugins not just uh, give you the ability to download the assets and use them. You can also um, write back the information, meaning if you have changed your InDesign document, you upload it as a version into the system again. And there will be functionalities which we call manage. If you have a workflow system like an Asana, um, actually, it, wouldn't it be great if someone is not just searching for an asset, but he gets his job ticket and that top job ticket is attached uh, uh, with an asset and uh, you open your job ticket in InDesign, you double click on the asset, you do your work. And if you're finished, you upload it again to the system and you check that task is done. That's really productive. And if you have that across all the applications, we believe that this is really empowering people to deliver more and better. Um, as of today, um, we have already 20 systems connected uh, and uh, we are expecting that we have 40 systems available in the same infrastructure and the same plugin uh, as, we, as, we have it, as we have it today. Um, you can always go to our website, you can uh, just click on who's, who's available, who's coming soon, and what kind of features are available. 
and uh, we're always here to help you with any of the questions. And it is extremely easy for you to just try it if you like what you've seen. Uh, just go to Adobe Exchange or to store.microsoft.com, download your version, create a CI app ID and uh, just play around with it for 30 days. So there's no risk in trying and see if you're happy with what we've built there. And we're always happy to get any kind of feedback, uh, positive and negative, to learn and make it better. Congrats. So, <laughs> we have 15 minutes for question and answers, and I would be very happy to answer some of them. Yeah, so maybe I can jump on some questions. Uh, and so I will ask you and try to provide uh, answers. So one of the questions, uh, uh, question, question was for you, Andy, but I think one of your last slides is the answer is uh, is this slide was displaying all the uh, all the connectors available today? Uh, what's coming up, or can you maybe bring some uh, awareness or new new things coming for this year? Uh, yes, we're constantly updating the functionalities. We are we are bringing new functionalities and we're adding uh, new new partners to the system. Uh, in the moment, we're we're with delivering some features every four weeks. Yeah. The amazing thing is if you have installed the plugin, uh, you get all the updates automatically. There is no administration uh, you need to do. It's just new functionalities are just there. There's an in-app communication system, so you're always informed on what's new and, uh, and how it can enhance your work. There are dozens of videos explaining in detail on how it works, so um, it's easy to implement. It's very easy to administrate. There's no C++ implementation, by the way, uh, which really helps uh, administration-wise. Yeah, and two are uh, attendees mm -hmm. asking if it's if you have something planned for uh, for Conto and Adobe Experience Manager. Uh, yes, uh, Adobe Experience Manager is a very important thing for us. Uh, we're working to integrate more and more of the Adobe product. There will be an Experience Manager. There will also be an, ex, an Adobe uh, library integration. Uh, so yes, we are working heavily on all the uh, Adobe integrations. Uh, you will see more. Uh, we're also trying to enhance uh, uh, to other products. Uh, there is a there is a customer wanting to have the bridge integration. Uh, we're checking on that. So there is there is a couple of stuff coming. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Canto. No, there is no Canto integration. Okay. Uh... Regarding the subscription, uh, we have a couple of questions. Can you tell a little bit more if it's something you can subscribe monthly, yearly, or anything like that? Could you repeat that? I'm sorry. Yeah, I said we have a couple of questions regarding the subscription model. So how does it work? Yes. Do you have to go with your direct with CIO yeah. or with a vendor, etc.? It is. It is. It is very simple. Um, it's a subscription-based model. It's 19 euros for all the Adobe products and for all the adapters. So with one plugin, one plugin you can use in all of your Adobe products. There's no extra cost and you can connect to every system which is available. There's also no extra cost. Um, it's, uh, I said that it's 19 euros for the Adobe world and 9 euros and 50 for the Microsoft world. You can get that on our website and you can get that through the partners. So if you if you're a customer of a brand folder or pixel box, you can go to your sales guy over there, and uh, they will provide you with that with yeah. the with the with correct license. Okay. Well, one question. And you can always, you can always go to Adobe Exchange and download it and try yeah. it for free for the. Yes, and I think you're also displaying the link for Microsoft, which is store at office.com. Uh, exactly. One other thing is because, of course, when you're working by a creative team, we have uh, sometimes we are changing files uh, using Dropbox or uh, the same. And one of the question is if somebody receive a file with the links to them, etc. Of course, they need to get the plugin also to to play with the with the links uh, regarding InDesign. Yes. Okay, so the best way is to connect to your 
Uh, maybe the question is if you're you don't have any something like some uh, a, uh, a pop up message that you have to go to a website to download the plugins, things like that. They, they have to to or is there any is 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 there any message regarding this uh, usage of the plugins? Can you repeat that? No, I think it's, it's hard, but... if you open a yeah. file that requires a plugin store. You you need to know that you need the plugins, but you don't have any uh, warning regarding the fact that you have to download the plugins to or to use their. Oh, okay. No, no. There is uh, no. There is there is. Um, we we do nothing to the file or to the file structure of an InDesign file. Um, if you have worked with the plugin and someone doesn't have the plugin, uh, there is no there is no problem in it. You don't have to download the plugin to work with it. Um, it's just not delivering the functionality, but there is no there is no need uh, for that plugin. It's also not uh, remembered within the uh, InDesign DOM that it was worked on with the plugin. So no, there is no problem with that at all. Okay. Uh, one question yeah. regarding the metadata. So can you uh, edit and change the metadata inside the plugin? Yes. Yes, we can do that. That just depends if the vendor where we connect to um, is is giving us the opportunity to change his metadata via his API. If a partner has that option, then the plugin can also write back metadata to the file. Yes. Of course, I see one of question: Is it available for Photoshop? I think we should repeat that available yes. for Photoshop, yes. Illustrator, uh, InDesign. Yes. Adobe Premiere and in copy. Yeah, and in and in, in copy. Uh, yeah. Um, I've got another, some. Of course, I've got a lot of questions. Uh, maybe we can spend one hour. Uh, okay. Uh, um, uh, yes, we have some questions regarding the, and it was very, uh, very amazing and very stunning uh, what we saw with here in PowerPoints. So uh, how does it work with Cloudinary uh, uh, services? So uh, do you have to pay for something? Is it, uh, how does it work rega regarding the license and the usage of the Cloudinary uh, image? Uh, yeah, in general, um, if you want to connect to um, a service where you have to have a subscription, like a Cloudinary, or if you want to use an Dropbox, uh, Dropbox business, or if you want to use um, a Salon system, you obviously have to have that system. So if you want to use a Dropbox business, you have to pay Dropbox for the business account. Um, uh, this doesn't come with our subscription model. Um, this is this is always separate. We only make the Dropbox business available, but you have to have a Dropbox business to use it. Um, in case of the Claudinary people, it's uh, we are you can use a free account um, and already use a lot of their transitions. Um, if you need more storage in the Claudinary system, then uh, you have to have an, a subscription with Claudinary. Uh, everything what I've showed today um, is available with uh, with a free account, um, but there is a lot of stuff which is which comes with a paid subscription, um, and we are actually working to make that available through other connections as well uh, that will be very uh, very interesting and powerful um, if you have your assets let's say within a pixel box system but you can using a claudinary transition that would be that's something very cool we're working on that okay uh, we have a question regarding revisions management so uh, can you tell a little bit more is it based on the dam feature or is it something that you manage on your side? And especially, for example, if you have a logo that you have in different colors, or have you, uh, have you, do you have to manage some naming convention or just to rely on the, on the DAM uh, capability? Yes, we are relying on the DAM capability. Um, if a DAM is not able to manage versions or revisions, uh, then we are not able to do that. To do that. Um, most of the DAM systems are able to do that. Um, and actually the CI app connector makes sure that uh, that you can't make anything wrong by uploading and updating 
uh, that's all handled within the plugin. Yeah, but if a system is not capable of managing versions, then uh, you will always overwrite the existing. So you always have the latest version available, but it will overwrite uh, older versions. Yeah, that just depends. There are systems where you can configure that, you can, you can activate or deactivate that. That always depends on the capabilities of the connected system. Yeah, for sure. And I think it's it's more or less the same because we have some questions regarding uh, expiration dates of a uh, on the assets. So yes. Uh, yes, the question is of course, can the system able to alert you so that you can find a replacement or renew uh, to stay in the compliance of the uh, of the asset? Yes. But I think it's also based on the dam capability. Exactly, that is. We are adding some capabilities to the dam systems. So um, you may know not all of the systems are capable to deliver previews of a PDF or previews of an InDesign file. Um, this may this is this might something what what is added by the CIR plugin, the capability that you can scroll through all of the pages in the preview. Um, that's the capability of CI Hub, and that's added to certain systems yeah um, so yes we do add some functionality but the core functions uh, need to come from the dam system or the pinch system or the cloud storage yeah system. okay yeah makes sense so um mm -hmm. the other question i think looks like that attendees were impressed by the this in just in one panel as i said at the beginning that you can get access to different dam system and, and cloud storage so the question looks like simple but uh how does the connector work between system? So to get a file from Dropbox and then uploading the assets into the dam. So it, it just as it is, I think it's nothing very complex. It's just different sources and you can move, uh, you can drop an asset from Dropbox and then uploading into your dam system as soon as you switch to the dam uh, source. Yeah. You know, the idea in mind was, you know, the, the, the normal situation in an agency is that the customer shares his original data within the Ceylon system, yeah, and maybe within your organization you have a Dropbox and maybe you share it in a Google Drive. Um, and to do that completely transparent, that's that's the idea of the CIR plugin, so you can work transparently between the different systems. Yeah, We can even work with shared folders in a Dropbox or shared folders in a Google Drive, uh, and you can, you can easily open a Google Drive uh, document within PowerPoint. It's just it's just a click and it's there yeah something maybe we can say and to leverage what you did especially for the dropbox uh because of course i'm i'm using also dropbox for my documents and especially for images if you are searching for you can try in the workspace of dropbox to search for any metadata just like the iptc you will not find the assets okay yeah. but you yeah. can find the assets yeah. thanks to the plugin yeah this is we completely we completely scan uh, the metadata of the assets within the Dropbox and make them searchable. Yeah, this is not a function that is available in the Dropbox itself. Yeah, we have uh, some other questions yeah. regarding the user uh, user the usage of rights uh, with stock, uh, Getty, ah. and etc. Uh, have you got? But I think we saw that in the in the information alongside the the images in the plugins. So. Uh, if, as for example, if you have a right to use the asset for uh, a catalog, but not for video, so how, how you can manage that? I think it's just displaying the metadata. Yes, just displaying the metadata. Okay. Um, I've got to know. No, um, no, yeah. Here's a very nice question. If you have linked assets across multiple sources, and want to distribute as native files, would user need to be packaged and store assets locally and then distribute? No, actually not. Um, uh, if you you can you can easily have um, assets in one InDesign document from multiple sources, um, and then if you share that InDesign file and someone else opens that, the system would automatically remember that there are that there are assets from different sources. Um, because we do know the the origin of that of that file, um, but the only thing what you would need is um, the person who is opening that InDesign file needs to have access to the different sources. Because if he doesn't have access, um, 
uh, the plugin obviously can't access that original file. Um, but we also have the ability to use, um, to upload um, InDesign files as packages or as PDFs with just one click. So that's, uh, that's actually very simple to, to do in addition there. Yeah, I can just, yeah, I don't know if the, if the, if someone is already is still there who was asking that question, but if I go to my Dropbox and if I want to upload that file, I can just say upload that InDesign file, upload it with the PDF, yeah, um, with PDF or with a package, and it would automatically upload, create a PDF based on your um, production styles and would create a package and that would be uploaded into your destination system. And you can share that or you can share multi-source assets uh, in the same way. So very, very simple. Okay. Um, we have other questions regarding the metadata uh, support and enhancements. So uh, it looks like the people really like the, uh, the Getty integration. So you have uh, the approval of all, all the people. And regarding the DAM system, can you uh, search for custom metadata and show them, or uh, does, it, uh, does it depend on the integration with the DAM system? So I know the answer, but maybe you can you can say more. <laughs> Yes, it depends. It depends on on the system. Um, if the system has custom metadata, we can easily display these custom metadata. Uh, if the system makes them available via the API, yes, that's not a problem at all. Yeah, for sure. I think, of course, as we said, uh, every DAM system has its own uh, way of managing the assets. They are all different APIs, and you'll just try to 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 make everything in the right order and to provide the best uh, user experience yeah. based on the API of a DAM system. Um, uh, one, one question here, if you have rights to an asset that have, expi that have expired, yes, the system can alert you. And also um, all the rights you have in the original systems are reflected in the plugin. So, uh, if you do not have access to certain uh, folders or to certain assets, you will not see them or you will not be able to access them or use them. Um, that just, again, depends on your rights in the original systems and if the API makes that available. I think as soon as we are close to, uh, to the end of the time, maybe you can tell a little bit more, on the regarding the uh, the roadmap for this year, uh, what's your vision of these uh, creative operations to bring even more efficiency alongside the, uh, this workflow and the plugin? Yeah. So what you will see, um, um, beside of adding more and more systems, uh, you will see more of automations like uh, I've showed it to you in the, in the Claudinary case. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of um, functionalities uh, in the plan which helps you automatically uh, create a layout or place uh, assets within a layout. Uh, we can already work with snippets and save snippets and use snippets for creation. Um, and you can expect there will be a lot more automation um, delivered at your hand to make repetitive tasks a lot easier. Yeah. Um, so this is this this is our goal. Um, to be honest, we have a three years plan on what we all want to achieve step by step. The first and most important thing is give you access to all of your assets wherever they are, uh, and then help you um, with with small we call them helpers or in app robots, and then help you with automation. So there is a lot of stuff which is coming. Yeah. Maybe I've got another uh, last question, which is maybe from mine, because yeah. I'm used to play with by customers. And we know that all customers are not using all the latest uh, CC versions. I still know that some people are still using the CS6, even if today with, uh, as for example, with the new, uh, uh, the new operating system from Apple, it's not something you can do regarding the 64 bit, etc. But how do, how, mm -hmm. uh, how many versions you, uh, are you supporting? Just like, uh, the 2020, 2019, how does it work? We we support everything, I think, back till 2016. So what we do not support is CS6, but everything else we do support. 
Um, and as there are no C++ plugins, whenever you do an update, there is never a delay from our side that you need certain compilations. Uh, just install the plugin and all the versions will immediately work. And that's the same in Adobe as it is in, uh, in Microsoft. Um, we will also work to make that plugin available in DMS system, so for web-based uh, content management systems. Uh, and we are thinking about making that available within the Google products. So if you have a G Suite product, and you have your data somewhere else, uh, we are thinking on making that plugin available within that infrastructure too. Okay. Our okay. idea at the end is, 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 yeah, assets at your fingertips. Yeah, Bill Gates already said that. Yeah, um, we want to make that happen for your asset. Um, and we don't want that you leave any application where you're comfortable in. Wherever you are, you should have access to all of your assets and the automations which comes with it. Yeah, so for sure what we can say at because we are a lot of webinars alongside this year, how to select a DAM system and etc. So one thing maybe I can say is, especially if you are working with agencies, creative operation teams, definitely you have to consider that if your DAM system is not part of this uh, of this space, uh, you have you have to to take into consider consideration regarding uh, the the selection of your DAM because. It provides a very a lot of capabilities and enhancements and time is money. So um, just try or as usual uh, do a proof of concept, test the plugins in there by your team, and you will see uh, the magic coming. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Fred. Uh to help us to make that event happen. Uh, we do hope it was interesting. Uh, we will share the video tomorrow. And whenever some of you has a question, don't hesitate, just get in contact with us. We're happy to answer any question and uh, let us know if you're missing a system. Uh, we're happy to add more to our infrastructure and platform. Okay. So, he he Heading back, thanks a lot to all of you. Um, yep. Enjoy the rest of the day or the evening. And keep safe. And stay safe. Yes, that's everything we can say so far. Bye bye. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye.